Hello students, welcome back to AIMS India live sessions, chemistry part. In this session, we are going to discuss about the chapter synthetic fibers and plastics. From this chapter, we are going to discuss about the concept about plastics. So we are having different concepts in the synthetic fibers and the plastics chapter. In the earlier classes, we have seen about different types of synthetic uh, fibers, what are fibers, how they are classified and what are the different kinds of synthetic fibers, we have seen these all. In this session, we are going to see about the plastics, different types of plastics. Plastic is also a polymer just like the synthetic fibers, which can be molded into different shapes. The word plastic originates from the Greek word plastikos which means that it, that can be molded or reshaped or deshaped. So, plastic are, plastics are also polymers like synthetic fibers. Yes, in the previous class we have discussed about the synthetic fibers as the synthetic fibers are polymers which are made up of so many molecules combined together. Poly means many, mer means a unit or molecule we told. So, single molecules so many they will combine together to form long chain molecules. These long chain molecules are called as polymers. And that phenomenon is called as polymerization. So how these synthetic fibers are polymers? In the same way, these plastics are also polymers. They also contain long chain molecules in them. So because of this reason, they can be deformed, reformed. They can be changing their shapes by applying uh, conditions they can be molded into different nice shapes. So this is because of the polymeric structures of these plastics. Plastic polymers can have different types of uh, arrangement of monomers. We told here polymers are made from monomers. Monomers are single molecules. So many single molecules they will combine to form many molecules are polymers. So in plastics, these formation of polymers will be in different kinds. The monomers are arranged in different uh, structures. We can see here, linear polymer means in which all the monomers are linked one another like a chain in one line. That is called linear polymer. So some plastics are there which are containing branched polymers. Means instead of being only in one line, these monomer molecules will be combined in even branches like branches also. That is called branched polymer. Some are there here. <coughs> Cross-linked polymers. So, so we can see here in being a linear polymers are there and at the middle some cross links are the, also there between their linear polymers. So in this way these are cross-linked polymers. One more type is there. That is a network type polymers. So it's like a network. All links are there between the polymeric chains. So in this way, based upon the arrangement of these monomers in the polymers, plastics are of uh, different kinds. Plastic, plastics can be recycled and used. Yes, we can once if you use certain plastics, we can recycle them. Again, we can use in the different forms. Plastics can be recycled. These can also be melted, rolled into sheets and made into wires and can be colored. So these all come under different advantages of plastics over the natural substances. Because these plastics once if we use, again we can use them by recycling. And we can color them with the different attractive colors. We can mold them into different shapes and we can make them into thin wires and we can make them to uh, different uh, objects. So these all are coming under advantages of uh, plastics over natural substances. That is why nowadays we are using these plastics in a new mode. And even we are replacing most of the natural substances uh, with these plastics. <coughs> so types of plastics. Mostly the broad categorization of plastics is of uh, two types. They are thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics, two kinds. 
So based upon as we told, as we have seen earlier, the arrangement of monomers in the formation of polymers, plastics are broadly classified into two types: thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics. So here, what are these thermoplastics? Thermoplastics means the plastics which can be remolded, reshaped, and recycled are <coughs> are called as thermoplastics. Certain plastics are there. Which cannot be remolded. Once if the plastic uh, is given a shape, is get turned into one tool, that plastic cannot be reshaped or recycled or remolded. Such type of plastics are called as a thermosetting plastics, which can be remolded, reshaped, and reused. Re uh, can be used or called as thermoplastics. This is uh, just based upon the rearrangement or arrangement of. molecules in the formation of polymers so this is this is a broad categorization of uh, plastics into two types they are thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics here they have given some examples also for these uh, different types of plastics you can see thermoplastics example they have given polythene pvc <coughs> this will come under examples for thermoplastics which we are using in the regular daily life also pvc pipes we use for pumping of water from one place to another place and even polythene is broadly used in the form of uh, polythene bags so this come under uh, thermoplastics because this plastic can be remolded and uh, reused by recycling processes and uh, some are there bakelite melamine these will come under thermosetting plastics because once these are formed they cannot be remolded so these are called thermosetting plastics these generally used for making of uh, these uh, <coughs> household utensils and uh, one can say some sockets of electrical so electrical wires and the uh, switch boards these all are made up of these uh, thermosetting plastics so in this way plastics are categorized into two types thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics so we are going to see in the about this uh, in our elaborate later <coughs> now as we told types of plastics <coughs> here are there the two types thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics first let us go through these uh, what are thermoplastics in in detail as i told thermoplastics uh, <coughs> are the such plastics which get easily bent or deform on heating are known as thermoplastics so once if you heat these plastics they will be melted and they can be redesigned remolded into different shapes such kind of plastics are called thermoplastics for example they have given some examples for the thermoplastics here they are pvc polyvinyl chloride pvc means here polyvinyl chloride this might we might have how this word pvc pipes in our homes for inserting these electrical wires in the walls and to pump the water from one room to other room from the tank to taps they use generally this pvc pipe plastic polyvinyl chloride pipes we use this is one of the thermoplastic and the polyethylene is this also to simply we say polythene bags which we use for carrying these uh, tools are also coming under thermoplastics because these all can be <coughs> can be recycled and remolded you can see these are used in making of toys bottles combs containers and even for bags bottles these all are made up of uh, these thermoplastics you can see some examples they have shown here see some plastic bags these are made up of thermoplastics and uh, the tools which we use in the home for domestic purpose will come under thermoplastics and the water bottles the bottles which are using for preservation of uh, soft drinks these all come under thermoplastics they can be remolded they will melt on heating such kind of plastics are called thermoplastics <coughs> second type of plastics are thermosetting plastics 
in the name itself it is setting once if they are set we cannot uh, remold them thermo setting plastics are such plastics which when molded once cannot be softened or deformed by heating or called as thermo setting plastics so certain plastics are there once if you mold them and form into one shape or one tool that cannot be remolded or it won't melt on heating such kind of plastics are called thermo setting plastics example for them are given here bakelite melamine this all will come under thermo setting plastics these plastics are used in making hard <coughs> hard boards electrical switches handles of electrical appliances and handles of kitchen utensils floor tiles etc so in these all thermo setting plastics are used you can see here hard tools mostly they are made up of uh, the thermo setting plastic uh, handles of uh, cooking utensils because they should be very hard enough <coughs> and uh, switch uh, electrical plugs and switches these all are made up of thermo setting plastics they will be very hard enough but once if they are made into that form they cannot be remolded that's a problem with this this uh, thermo setting plastic but the advantage is they will be much hard enough like metals and they won't uh, uh, conduct heat and electricity that is why they are mostly used in making of these all utensils uh, in electrical appliances mostly like iron boxes uh, out body of these outer iron boxes and electrical plugs switch boards and the uh, handles of these uh, household utensils like pans and pans of the which we use in homes so they are all made up of these thermo setting plastics <coughs> melamine is versatile material and poor conductor of heat it resists fire thus it is used in making of floor floor tiles kitchen materials fabrics which resist fire yes it is given about melamine here melamine melamine is one of the thermo setting plastic which is a poor conductor of electricity and heat also and it resists fire that is why mostly the jockets or cords which are used by the fire controlling men firemen we call them who will try to stop these fires caused by accidents those uh, those will, people will wear certain special cords which are made up of this uh, material melamine because this melamine is thermal resistant it won't uh, conduct heat in heat so that the people will be <coughs> survived and even certain kitchen materials floor tiles these are also made up of this uh, melamine bakelite also is a poor conductor of uh, electricity and heat thus it is used for making electrical switches handles of various utensils and other electrical appliances you can see in the picture they have shown certain electrical appliances so which are these all are made up of uh, melamine either melamine or bakelite these two are hard plastics which once formed they cannot be remolded but they are poor conductors of heat and electricity hence they are having many uses in our daily life this is about the two types of plastics first we have seen about thermo plastics second one thermo setting plastics what is the major difference between these two thermo plastics can be remolded they will melt on heating they can be reshaped or reused recycled but certain thermo certain plastics are there which cannot be remolded once if it is formed it cannot be reshaped such kind of plastics are called as a thermo setting plastics both are having different uses <coughs> so plastics as materials of choice due to that means we are using plastic in many ways in many forms broadly so we are taking it as one of the choices for using as materials nowadays so what are the reasons for this that we are going to see here yes if you see once the picture given here most of the <coughs> things which we are using at home are uh, uh, replacing the other natural substances by the replaced by 
plastic nowadays why this plastic is having this much of choice to be used so the main pro properties of these uh, plastics are like this here you can see lightweight yes it is a uh, lighter than natural materials <coughs> suppose uh, a bucket which we use at the home if it is made up of iron or a certain steel and some other alloy material material also will be used <coughs> will be having in holdness so if you carry that it will be having certain weight will be heavy weight but nowadays we are using or we replace this uh, metallic buckets with a uh, plastic bucket because this plastic bucket will be light in weight it can be carried very easily <coughs> low price yes it is also one of the important point or uh, to choose uh, as a plastic as our household material they are cheaper than the natural materials if you to, uh, choose a chair if you use a uh, uh, iron chair or wooden chair it costs more whereas if you use a plastic chair it is cheaper than those all so low low price is also one of the important point good strength yes they are durable <coughs> such like any natural uh, tools <coughs> they are also having good strength easy handling yes we can handle them very easily very easily because uh, they will be light in weight and uh, one of the important points is a uh, poor conductor of heat and electricity yes plastics are poor conductor of heat and electricity they won't uh, conduct electricity if you use this as electrical appliances or at the uh, fireworks where we are using uh, like cooking and dissolve they also they protect us from uh, heat and electricity because these plastics are poor conductors of heat and electricity so it is also one of the best or uh, important point uh, to replace these natural tools with these plastic materials <coughs> not reactive yes it is also one of the points these plastic materials are not reactive that means they won't get a rust just like the metallic objects if you use certain metallic objects like a <coughs> earlier we told if a chair is made up of iron after few years that iron or uh, rods in that chair will get a starting will, they will start getting rusting they will be spoiled after few years if you keep them outside whereas if you take a plastic chair even after years of time it won't get any rust because it is chemically inert it won't combine with the chemicals present in the atmosphere so because plastics are non reactive <coughs> even they won't corrode also they won't get rust or they won't be corroded <coughs> that means they are non reactive so these are all the important points or the reasons we can say to choose as a plastic as our daily using materials by replacing the natural materials <coughs> next what are the uses of these plastics and we can see the reason behind the usage of these plastic articles also let us see one by one here first <coughs> as i told buckets are made of plastics nowadays which we are using so you can see a plastic bucket is shown here so earlier days we were using metallic buckets so why we are using nowadays plastic buckets means the reason behind it is plastic buckets are strong light in weight and do not get rust yes they will be strong like metal metallic uh, buckets and even they are very light in weight which can be carried very easily and they won't get rust more most importantly metallic buckets after few years they'll get rust and they'll be spoiled whereas plastic bucket they won't get rust they'll be like that even after few years also one more important point is uh, they can be uh, colored in the different attractive colors so because of these reasons nowadays plastic is with making of these are buckets and uh, tools <coughs> one more point backlight plastic is with making of electrical switches as we told at the starting about backlight as thermosetting plastic which is used for making of these uh, switches plugs and these all why because the reason behind it is backlight is a poor conductor of heat and electricity it won't pass any current through it so if you observe the switchboards and plugs 
inside of those there will be electrical wires connected to them but when you touch the switch you won't get any shock this is because these uh, switches are made up of bakelite which is a bad conductor of heat and electricity it won't pass current through it that is the advantage of using this bakelite as making in making of these switches and plugs so bakelite is used as switches because of because it is poor conductor of heat and electricity <coughs> one more melamine is used to make uh, crockery crockery means uh, the household tools plates cups saucers bowls these all will come under crockery these all are made up of melamine the reason for this is melamine is unbreakable fire resistant and uh, <coughs> tolerates heat better than plastic hence it can be used to make crockery that can hold hot liquids or dishes and served in it so melamine can resist the even much heat and heat and temperature also it won't be melted as we told thermosetting plastics won't be melted once they are formed they cannot be remolded even though if you pour hot liquids into that they won't be reshaped they won't be melted out that is why these are used for you <coughs> serving these all hot food items even nowadays we are using ovens uh, electrical ovens also at home so in the ovens generally we keep some bowls which are having food items which to be made in a oven so there those bowls are generally made of this melamine because this even this melamine can survive even at a very high temperatures also so these are the advantages with melamine as being used as crockery at home next let us see plastics are used in cars aircraft and space spacecraft parts yes we can say many of the parts in the cars are made up of this plastic even in aircraft and spacecrafts also some of the body parts are made of these uh, plastics the reason for this plastics are strong durable lightweight and corrosion resistant so there is important reasons for using these plastics in these are uh, parts of these cars and aircrafts even in spacecrafts also they will be light in weight suppose if you see uh, the aeroplane which should, should be it should fly in the air if you use uh, complete metals to make this aeroplane it will very heavy it cannot fly that is why they use uh, along with certain alloys most of the plastic body will be used plastic materials are used in making of this body parts of aircrafts and spacecrafts they will be tough enough uh, strong enough for metallic objects and they are more durable than these metallic objects because they won't be corroded they won't get rust even after few long time usage also so there are the advantages in using uh, these plastic objects making of parts of cars and airplanes <coughs> chemicals are stored in plastic bottles yes if you go ever to a uh, chemical laboratory if you observe some chemicals stored in the laboratory mostly chemical substances are stored in plastic bottles and some are stored in glass bottles most of the chemicals we can store in even plastic bottles also why how we can store chemicals in a plastic bottle the reason for this is plastic bottles are light in weight of course unbreakable <coughs> corrosion resistant and are resistant to action of chemicals that means these uh, plastic bottles are unbreakable suppose if you stored if you have stored certain salt chemical salt in a glass bottle unfortunately it is fallen down immediately that glass bottle will broken broke up into small pieces and the chemical will come up out it may cause some accidents whereas if you store these chemicals in a plastic bottle which is unbreakable in that fell down it will be safe enough but there is one reason most important reason behind using these plastic bottles for preserving chemicals in the laboratory is they are <coughs> resistant in the action of chemicals they won't react with the chemicals which are stored in the bottle if you use uh, metallic bottles or uh, certain metallic bottles to store these uh, 
chemicals <coughs> which are used in the laboratory these chemicals may react with uh, metals or metal with which that bottle is made they may form some new chemicals instead of being same so they may react with the bottle instead if you use these plastic bottles for the preservation of these chemicals these plastic bottles they won't react with the chemicals which are there inside hence the chemicals are being safe in the same form so that is the reason behind to use these plastic bottles for the preservation of chemicals in the laboratories not only in the laboratory we see some pesticide bottles also nowadays which we are using to spread spray on the farms fields to kill these insects and these are pests so those pesticides also are stored under in uh, plastic bottles <coughs> because that plastic won't react with the pesticide which is there inside Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience, children. A uh, small technical problem. Uh, we have come back uh, by resolving that. So let us continue that. We have seen different uses of plastics and the reason behind for using these plastics in these different forms. And at last, uh, here we have stopped. <coughs> some other use of these plastics in different forms for example if you see non stick cookware non stick coating on the cookware is made with uh, a polymer or plastic which is called teflon <coughs> and uh, insulation covering on wires that is electrical wires we use at homes uh, there actually the electrical conducting wires will be some metallic wires these metallic wires are covered with plastic which is called pvc so pvc is used for insulating these metallic electrical wires to avoid getting electrical shocks and polyethylene polyethylene bags are made up of polyethylene so nowadays we are using these polyethylene bags in a huge quantity so these polythene bags are made up of a polymer or plastic called polythene and uh, flame resistant uniforms which are used by fire controlling persons <coughs> they use the fire fighters we call them these fire fighters use some special coats or jackets which are made up of a plastic called melamine so these are the different uses of plastics and the reasons behind them now <clears throat> let us see what are biodegradable and non biodegradable substances out of these plastics are a threat to the environment as it is non biodegradable its disposal is a big problem to the environment because it is non biodegradable what is the meaning of this word non biodegradable let us see here first of all let us see about biodegradable material which gets decomposed through natural process is called biodegradable substance means the material which decomposes by the natural actions are called biodegradable substances <coughs> here we can see example some food waste material and uh, wood leaves these all will be decomposed naturally in the nature so by the natural action they will be decomposed they will be Uh, mixing with the soil there 
such kind of materials which decompose themselves by the natural actions or natural process are called as biodegradable substances <coughs> the peels of vegetables the waste food items if you throw them after few days they will be decomposed themselves so these are coming under biodegradable substances there are certain substances which won't be decomposed materials which cannot be easily decomposed by natural process are called as non biodegradable substances so certain substances are there even after a few years also they won't be decomposed which won't decompose easily by the natural process are called as non biodegradable substances here are certain mostly the plastic objects the plastic tools these won't be decomposed easily and they won't mix into the nature by the natural process they will take thousands of years of time to be decomposed hence we told at the starting these are these plastics are a big threat threat to the environment they are causing much harm to the environment even though these plastics are having many uses these are being used nowadays in the daily life uh, in the many forms these plastic substances won't be decomposed by the natural process even after years of time also that is why these are very big problem nowadays to the environment <coughs> the disposal of these waste plastics is much problem plastics and the environment what relation between them let us see plastic is a non biodegradable material yes we said plastics won't be decomposed even after a few years of time also when they are disposed so they won't be decomposed by the natural processes that is why <coughs> we say them non biodegradable it takes many years to get decomposed or either does not get decomposed yes few substances few plastic substances may take years of or thousands of years of time to be decomposed but some are there they won't decompose at all they will in the same form even after years and years of time also so the disposal of these plastic items is very harmful due to non biodegradable property of these plastics it is a very major problem for the environment how do plastics cause environmental pollution so we are telling these won't be decomposed or these are non biodegradable so what happens if we throw these uh, plastic objects into the atmosphere or any environment how these uh, cause pollution to this environment let us see plastics cause pollution as they are non biodegradable because we are telling they are non biodegradable they will be in the same form wherever you throw them so they cause uh, pollution in the soil <coughs> even they release toxic fumes when burnt if you burn these plastic items like covers or bottles they produce some chemicals or gases which are much toxic toxic in the sense they are dangerous they may cause illness even sometimes death also so those gases which are harming us are called toxic gases so when these plastics are burnt in the air or when these plastics are burnt in the atmosphere they produce some harmful gases which are called toxic gases so in this way air is being polluted in the area in this way they are causing environmental pollution when you dispose these plastic items in the atmosphere nature or if you burn those chemical plastics also they are producing air pollution five hours to minimize the environmental damage caused by plastics so there are some principles five rules to minimize the pollution or environmental pollution caused by these plastic items what so these are simply called five hours what are those let us see <coughs> so first among them is refuse do not buy things we do not need so don't buy the unnecessary plastic items so that we can reduce plastic uh, pollution so don't need don't buy the things which you don't need presently second one reduce 
minimize the use of plastics in our daily life yes we can minimize the plastic uses in the daily life by planning suppose we are going to buy some uh, tools in market like vegetables if we carry a uh, bag cloth bag or jute bag there will be no you uh, <coughs> no need of uh, buying any polythene covers at the market so if you carry bags with you while moving from home to the market then there will be no need of uh, buying these so we can minimize the usage of plastic in that way next one reuse if you reuse the items we have already instead of uh, throwing them away yeah yes we can reuse the plastic items which we have already with us instead of throwing them and buying the new one instead of throwing the already existing plastic items with us uh, and buying the new one we can reuse them because these plastic items won't be spoiled easily we can use them and uh, by repetitions so that we can stop buying the new things in that way also we can control these uh, pollution caused by these uh, plastic items one more is there repurpose if you are not using something alter or change it to uh, to use it in a different way so if we have certain plastic items we don't use now we are not using them now we can change the plastic items to some other to use in the different forms instead of uh, taking some other new plastic item to use in, in that uh, reason we can use already existing plastic plastic items by you altering them so in such a way in that way also we can reduce the uh, buying of these new plastic items hence we can help the environment and we can reduce the damage caused by these plastics one more is a recycle yes this is one of the important uh, uh, <coughs> factor which can control the pollution caused by these plastics to the environment some plastic waste can be sorted and made into other things in recycling factories this helps us to reduce our carbon footprint yes certain plastics can be remolded recycled those we call at the starting some uh, thermo plastics of course any thermo setting plastic they cannot be remolded as we told but most of the thermo plastics which we are using at our homes in the daily life they can be recycled so first they will categorize these in different forms so those plastics they will melt again and they form new plastic items that we call recycling <coughs> they will melt these already existing plastic waste and they form it they make them into new plastic items so by that also we can control the environmental pollution caused by plastics so these are called five r's refuse reduce reuse repurpose and recycle so there are the five r's which are uh, helping us in minimizing the environmental damage caused by plastics <coughs> so now let us see about uh, <coughs> plastics we have seen already about the plastics let us analyze what we have learned in this chapter from the plastics by having some questions based upon this plastic concept first among them which is a thermo setting plastic here some plastics are given out of this let us find which is thermo setting plastic what is thermo setting plastic <coughs> at the starting we discussed about the classification of plastics into two types thermo plastics and thermo setting plastics thermo plastics are plastics which can be reshaped or reused recycled they can be remolded they will be melted on heating such kind of plastics are called thermo plastics second category thermo setting plastics once they are formed they cannot be reformed into other forms they are called thermo setting plastics out of the option shown here uh, if you say can you try to answer this yes many of you are trying to give the answer polythene polyvinyl chloride which is simply called pvc nylon these three will come under thermoplastics only 
melanine <coughs> melanine is the thermosetting plastic <coughs> which is used in making of uh, these jackets crockery jackets used by fire fighters so here correct answer is melamine <coughs> it is a correct answer for this yes we told at the starting crockery used at home are made up of this uh, melamine it is one of the thermosetting plastic next one let us see second question the most suitable material for the preparation of handles of cooking utensils that is the options polyethylene nylon pvc backlite which is the most suitable material for making these handles of cooking utensils can anyone answer this <coughs> is it a polythene nylon pvc or backlite yes anyone can pvc means here polyvinyl chloride yes the correct answer is a backlite you are right yeah many of you are trying to give correct answer yes it is backlite <coughs> backlite is correct because it is one of thermosetting plastic which is thermal resistant it we don't pass the heat through it so even though the bowl or <coughs> cooking uh, bowl even it is heated on the stove it won't pass the heat through it so if you handle the handle is made up of this backlite we can handle that also we can that uh, we can handle that uh, easily without getting any heat so backlight is a correct answer you can see uh, all the household written <coughs> tools are shown here for this all backlight uh, handles are there this can be handled even after keeping on the stove also because it won't pass heat through it when the bowl is very hot this won't uh, be much hotter so backlight is correct next question plastic bags are generally made from which plastic yes plastic bags are made of which plastic are asking pat polythene bakelite or melamine <coughs> which is the correct answer plastic bags are made of yeah we say polythene bags so in the name it is a polyethylene polythene say simply <coughs> polythene is the plastic which is used in making of this plastic covers plastic bags polyethylene it is called simply chemical it is polyethylene or polyethylene commonly we are calling as polythene polythene bags <coughs> so pop b is correct answer next question what can we conclude from circuit shown in the following figure see here the two circuits are shown <coughs> in one circuit bulb is glowing in one of the circuits bulb is not glowing if you observe in one circuit metallic object is used to close the circuit in a second circuit plastic object is used for closing the circuit so the circuit in which metallic object is used the bulb is glowing in the circuit plastic object used bulb is not glowing now <coughs> what conclusion we gain to based upon these two circuits let us see options given metals can conduct electricity is it correct second one plastics are poor conductors of electricity metals and plastics both can conduct electricity <coughs> both a and b are correct that means metals are conductors good conductors plastics are poor conductors so what will be the correct answer for this what can we conclude actually they are asking what conclusions we can give based upon the circuits given here so in one circuit bulb is glowing in the second circuit bulb is not glowing in the first circuit where bulb is glowing metallic object is used in the circuit where bulb is not glowing their plastic object is used from the circuit pictures we can conclude that yes 
you can try giving answer with the live chat many different answers are we getting so first of all let us see in this circuit metallic object is used and bulb is glowed from this you can say this metallic or metal rod is passing electricity through it so that so circuit is closed hence bulb is glowed so metals are good conductors of heat and electricity this is uh, correct one metals can conduct electricity second one in this uh, plastic rod or plastic object is used to close a circuit but here bulb is not glowed from this you can say electricity is not passed through this plastic hence plastics are poor conductors of electricity so this is also correct statement from uh, which is given as conclusion next one metals plastics both are conductors but uh, we came to conclude that plastics are poor conductors so only metals are good conductors so this will be wrong also now what will be correct answer children yes d is correct answer because metals are conductors plastics are poor conductors next last question which of the following articles is made by using only man made substances let us see here the objects given a hat spades shoe gloves if you observe these ones the object which is made up of only plastic items or only man made substances they are asking if you see the hat it is made up of a cloth or it might be prepared from certain natural objects like a cloth or so wool wool or cotton or jute also will be used in making of hats if you see shoe if you observe clearly there are leather shoe leather is a natural object natural substance which we get from the dead animals and these all so shoes are made of course uh, some uh, pins or buttons are used, made by man made materials but and these uh, uh, ropes or shoe lace are made up of nylon which is made man made but uh, some natural material also there in the shoe if you see these gloves these are seems like woolen gloves wool wool is a natural existing substance which is obtained from hair of these some animals like sheep and uh, uh, ag these all so but if you observe the second option it is spets which is made up of completely plastic so plastic and even these uh, optics well, these glass are made up of glass item optic we call optics so these are man made material completely these spets are made up of man made substances whereas the remaining three are containing either man made or natural substances but we cannot prepare these spets by using any natural material compulsory we have to use either plastic and even a uh, glass also both are man made substances only so the correct answer is b so this is about uh, the plastics and the categorization of plastics into thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics and we have seen different uses of plastics also okay thank you for watching our video please subscribe our channel and uh, visit our website www.aimstoday.in to for latest updates and recorded videos recorded videos means if anybody of you missing these uh, live sessions you can watch these recorded videos in our website and even our youtube channel also that is aims today youtube channel and the aims today dot in website also we can watch our recorded versions of these videos thank you